Yeah. Five nine J. Suckers want smoke too. I'm blowing the steamer. This ain't what you want, boy. Lil Dirk single. Hey, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. With that being said, one of my subscribers, a good friend of mine, actually reached out to me and told me to, to look up a few things, you know, do some research. I read upon it, and he wanted me to talk about it and elaborate just on, you know, the ongoings and the current issues that have been taking place recently within the, within the Valle in Northern California. Also because, you know, he also said I was I was emphasizing a lot about, you know, the Southern Califas, the Southern factions when it comes to, you know, the Amen and, and the Southern inmates and the Sureños, should I say. So he wanted me to kind of, uh, you know, reiterate the fact that, you know, Northerners are still doing what they're supposed to be doing, that they still exist. And amongst, you know, levels of, uh, should I say, criminal enterprise is... In the same in the same sense, in the same fashion that I've been elaborating and expressing about, you know, Southern California as well. So I took it upon myself to to do some research, and I have a I think I have a good video for you guys. So with that being said, man, hit that subscribe button, hit that like. Always check the links in the description. It has all my songs right there. So to my, it has the links to my Spotify and Apple Music. And let's get into the video. The first operation that I want to talk about, I'm going to talk about two in this particular one because I'm going to do another video on another two different operations that I'm very, very familiar with. But this one right here was called Operation Blackhawk. It happened in um, September 16th of 2021. Odd day, huh? But you know, it's crazy that, that, that the, the day that the, this operation this bus came down, this cracked down on, and everything that took place is September 16th. That's one of the biggest, most celebrated dates when it comes to the Northern struggle, North Daniel struggle. We are firm believers in that, in that date because of September 16, 1968, which is the war cry and the break off of the NF against the enemy. So I find it convenient that, you know, this, this, this particular operation you know, it was, in, it was a five-month investigation, but it took down a big operation in Northern California, especially in the homeland of Salinas. You know, that's the home, that's the heartland of uh, mafiosos and farmeros, day in and day out. So the operation takes place. $1.8 million worth of, of drugs was seized in this operation. And I'm talking about this operation took place this operation uh, was a crackdown all within the Monterey County area. But what tripped me out, right, is that it, it references in the article, but I didn't catch a lot. I caught the names, right? But a lot of these names were, when a lot, a lot of people weren't speaking about these names in particular, I viewed it on other prison genre channels and no one's came up with these particular names. That's why I won't say them, but we're talking about the street regimens in Salinas, California, who actually were utilizing... Uh, North Cal trunk, a trucking company. So they were using big rigs, 18 wheelers, and they were trafficking drugs from the Sinaloa cartel all the way to Yuma, Arizona. That's big moves right there. You're talking about the Sinaloa cartel. Now, I don't know too much about the Mexican cartels. I watch videos on them. You know, I'm, I'm familiar, you know, with you know, El Chapo Guzman's son getting busted. I know about like Nuevo, Nuevo Leon and you know, El Mancho, stuff like that. Just, you know, minor details here and there. So I don't know how much of a big impact the Sinaloa cartel has when it comes to, you know, Northern and Southern California and the distribution of narcotics and trafficking. But we're talking about the FBI here getting involved in crossing state lines and interstate drug trafficking and narcotics trafficking with Salinas gang leaders. We're not, we're not talking about just regular Salinas, Salinas and like Norteño street gangs. We're talking about all high-ranking members of Selena's gang leaders in connections and in cahoots with members that are from Yuma, Arizona, a legitimate trucking company, and the Sinaloa cartel. Now that, I could tell you right there, after reading that article, I was like, you know what? You know, kind of give you a sense of pride and that the fact that the homies are involved, it may not be more as frequent as you would see in Southern California news medias and from their factions because they are a little bit bigger, but 
to 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 hear the homies that actually are you know crossing those uh those borders and um creating that criminal enterprise and operating it on such a mass scale and such a big level you know it was kind of it gave me a little bit of you know a proud moment to say you know what even though i'm away from that life and i i pursue to do the normal thing now it's good to see that my my, my people are still willing to prosper and do what they got to do and you know more power to them but like i said 1.8 million dollars worth of drugs was seized and i'm talking about over 25,000 thousand 25,000 fentanyl pills was confiscated 60 pounds of meth 10 pounds of heroin and a pound and a half of cocaine which is odd because you know you're talking about 60 pounds of meth but only one and a half pound of coke like i guess there's a drought in mexico with coke but hey maybe coke don't sell like that but everybody knows methamphetamine has big one has big it is one of the biggest drug epidemics I think in all the United States, that drug is more addictive than I can possibly care to imagine and care to rethink about because I was I was strung out on it for a little bit, and so I got my dose of heroin and I, I realized that you know I'd rather be mellow than rather than be all weirded out and you know tripping out on everything. But throughout throughout this uh this uh massive you know gang bust, you, they did try they did confiscate a lot of drugs. They cop they confiscated. A substantial amount of money, meaning they said it was over ninety thousand dollars in cash, plus cashier checks. So, so as I'm reading this, I'm, I'm trying to see where the homeboy was trying to uh, elaborate to me, and I get the point that he was trying to make. Like, you know, I was, you know, speaking highly on the on the Southern California homies, and you know, let them. I just, but I, in reality, it's because. I can do that now, being on this side. Like, I don't have to look at them as, like, being biased anymore. You know, I don't have that hate for them that the homies embedded in me, not even knowing who, they were, who these individuals were. You know, I just took it upon myself to say, you know what? I just want to know who they are. I already know how Northerners operate, how Northerners operate, how the big homies think and the way they govern. You know, I just wanted to take a, a different approach in life and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, a different approach of mindset and say, you know what? I want to see what Southern California is like, man. I want to see what they're doing. I want to see what that power is like. So I elaborated on some videos and he's, you know, he wanted to redirect me towards homies from Northern California based on the fact that, you know, I do got Northerners and homies from Northern California that watch my YouTube channel. So he kind of, I think it was an equal balance he wanted me to produce here. It was just a show, a show, a show of hand and a show of power that both sides are very powerful that nobody's really winning the war. Unlike what Bozo said, you know, how Southern California is winning the war. So I get it. So I took the time to do my research. And, you know, this is some very interesting facts. This operation is real mind-blowing. 1.8 million seized in narcotics. That should tell you something. Then I wound up reading up on another subscriber in that same section. was like, hey, why don't you read up on uh, Operation Quiet Storm? This one I was familiar with. You know, everybody knows Salvador Castro... You know, gangster from uh, Salinas. I actually got a story about him, but that's for later on down the road. Then you Esteban, you know, Steven. All them fools getting busted. We're talking about 55 individuals got busted. But here's the part that, that kind of blows my mind. A lot of these individuals got indicted, right? Rico indictments, conspiracies. A lot of them are conspiracy charges. That, that, that term conspiracy, that charge alone... Hold so much in court and can literally give you a life sentence. Just conspiracy alone. Conspiracy to commit, you know what I'm talking about. That alone, just to be able, just to just for them to prove that you conspired, that you thought about it, can can railroad a lot of individuals. And a lot of these individuals got conspiracy charges to commit this, this, and that. Why? Because a lot of these individuals were regiment commanders, Pleasant Valley, Solano, New Folsom, High Desert, Corcoran. They were out there on these main lines doing what they got to do, obviously being unit commanders or regiment commanders in touch with the streets, trying to control the streets and the drug trade and the drug operations and create these regiments out there to, you know, be self-sufficient and be well-funded for these organized crime groups. But they're on the yard sanctioning a lot of hits, sanctioning a lot of hits on individuals that, you know, had it come in or who, who were... And if associates that had to come in, this individual did this for violating this or whatever the case may be. 
a couple of individuals, they only provided their initials, they didn't give their full names, were actually stabbed multiple times. Some individuals got away, but were found with paperwork saying like, man, these individuals were particularly targeted. Now, mind you, in prison, when I was busted, if you got caught with the BNL hooped in your cell on your possession, that alone was a DA referral. That alone was a conspiracy to commit on behalf of a street, uh, on behalf of a prison gang. That alone could have got a lot of individuals' lives. I, we used to try to ask Northerners all the time to Xerox the BNL because that's one of the oldest documents being circulated, and it's we're talking about four to six thousand names on there at a time, and then. Additions were getting added every kite we got from uh, from Corcoran Shoe, from Pelican Bay, from different prisons. More names were being added to this being now. So that thing was getting bigger and bigger. To ask a Northerner to Xerox that, it was very uncomforting. Because not only does he have to Xerox it and smell this nasty smell that, you know, just came out of another man's rectum. But... He, uh, he, also was, he also takes the risk that at any given moment, they can run up in that cell. Uh, they could do a random cell search. IJ I can come up in there, and he might get caught in possession of a BNL. That's conspiracy to commit. That holds a big penalty and a big charge and a big case if the DA was to pick that up. And a lot of these individuals in this Operation Quiet Storm got indicted based on sanctioning removals in prison. Nobody even died from these removals. That's the thing. When reading this article... The only one, oh, Esteban, he, he got convicted of a 2009 um, th uh, incident that happened on the streets back in the day. But that's what he was busted for. You know, that's probably what made his bones. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know all the details. But still, a lot of these individuals got busted that were trying to create these street regiments in Stanlos County, Tulare County, Kings, Con Kings County, Monterey County, all the way up in San Jose. You know, it was a big crackdown, especially with the, they said it was Sanjo Grande that got busted. It was a big gang sweep, massive gang sweep. Uh, La, uh, La Palmas was a big gang sweep. They took a lot of the neighborhood down there. They tried to dismantle the organized, you know, structure that was in place, that was functioning, that was uh, funding the street regiments and funding these carnales that were on these mainlands at the time. It says it right there. It doesn't say the, the, the precise amount of money that was busted, but they said a substantial amount of money in bulk was seized along with narcotics and weapons and firearms. So with that being said, these two alone, and these were both recent, these were 2021, are clear indications that the homies are pretty much still up to par. The homies are doing what they're supposed to be doing, that nothing's really died down. And I know, it may, I know in my prior videos it may seem that way, but you got to remember I'm out here on the streets. I know my area and I know it very well. But some of these indictments, you know, it looks, you know, 55 members is a lot of members. You know, whatever, whatever substantial amount of uh, drugs and money and guns was confiscated. Yeah, but you were talking about just a small amount compared to all the neighborhoods that are out here. Compared to all the neighborhoods in Salinas. What I was, my, my point was, is like these guys don't got control of everything. Southern California is a different look. It's a different aspect. Them big homies out there, they got control of a majority of it. 75, 80% of LA, San Diego, and Inland Empire, and the, that little area of Southern California, they control a big portion of it. All I was saying, as opposed to the homies, there's a lot more that they haven't gained control over because of the Northern mentality where we refuse to pay taxes, we refuse to work for a big homie. A lot of homies out here just... They don't really care about the prison aspect, the prison life, the prison politics. They're homies from the hood, they're farmeros, they're Chicanos, they're proud to be where they're from, so on and so forth, but they don't get heavily involved like that. A lot of neighborhoods don't get heavily involved like that, but the ones that do, like I mentioned in these two uh, operations, for those that take it serious, for those that actually choose to prosper and choose to work for big homies and become big homies, and for the carnales that actually have a handle on things, you know, there's opportunity and growth and expansion, you know, and, and I get it. These homies are still doing what they got to do. They still are living under the belief system that these street regimens are necessary and can still be effective. Because look, 
they managed to they managed to cross that border and and connect ties and gain ties with the Sinaloa cartel. That's impressive. So I do give credit where credit's due. Like I always said, I give respects to both sides. I'm never biased. I'm always neutral. I believe Southern California, the homies are doing their thing. And after reading these articles, and I actually read five more different operations about what certain things and certain homies and what's taking place. So I got to give credit to the homies that are still continuing to do what they got to do, so on and so forth. But overall, like I said, my message will always be to the youth. You know, it, all, it always looks good. You know, trust me, I was fascinated. I was impressed. Even reading these articles, I'm still impressed of the of the heavy involvement that it takes, the structure, the organized crime. You know, it's it's fascinating. I get it. I can see why it's so alluring where you get lured into that, to that lifestyle because you want the money, you want the power, you want the fame, you want everything that it comes with. Hey, I would have loved to be in my times be able to cross that border and actually meet Sinaloa cartel members like what I watch on all these movies like you know watching Nauticals or watching you know on Mundo Fox uh, like what you would see on Telemundo like El Señor de los Cielos man you see these shows Muñecas de la Mafia El Carteles de los Sapos when I used to watch all these um just regular novelas about the cartels you know I was fascinated with the lifestyle the beautiful women you know the money the luxurious cars the big trucks you know the traveling the world you know, everything that involves the cartels, anything that involves with the homies, of course, when I was young and I was ambitious and I was thriving and I, I was willing to throw it all away just for a small portion to enjoy that lifestyle, to experience it. Trust me, I get the fascination. But as you can see with a lot of these operations, as I'm reading you these articles, are clear indications as well that, you know, all good things come to an end. And... A lot, oftentimes, a lot of people, it looks good. It's fun while it lasted. People make money. People get rich. But it's just temporary, like baby teeth. Then you end up getting busted. And now you're just going to be sharing that same power that that next man has or that man that you were working for has. But you're also going to be sharing that same cell with them for the rest of your life. So think twice before you decide to you know, go down that route and say, you know what? I want the money. I want the power. I want the fame. I want to work for this mob boss. I want to work for these uh mafiosos down here because you can work for them and then you can just end up just like them too as well so with that being said man like i always say one life one chance man we only got one chance to do this right let's get it done peace